Welcome everybody. Today we're going to look at the sine law um, dealing with obtuse triangles. So we've looked at them with acute triangles. Things will change slightly when we're dealing with obtuse triangles. Before we get into things, let's quickly review the formula. You can see here are the sine law written two different ways. Uh, they're both valid. They both work. Uh, you might like just one of them and not the other one. That's fine. I kind of use both of them. Just uh, I kind of find some shortcuts sometimes with that. But you really only need to know it one way. So you choose which one you like. Let's also review that supplementary angle relationship when it deals with sine law. So here it is once again. Uh, when you have the sine of an angle, it is equal to the value of sine 180 minus that angle. So a couple quick examples I wrote out here. You can see I have sine 70. That is going to be equal to sine of 180 minus 70 which works out to be 110, meaning sine 70 and sine 110 will look the same value-wise. You won't be able to know. Um, your calculator always spits out the acute angle. Um, it'll always tell you an acute angle, so you'll have the value. The 70 is what your calculator will put out to you. You have to make the decision, is it 70 or does it look like it's an obtuse angle? If it looks obtuse, then you got to decide, oh, I guess it means 110. Um, in this second example over here, you can see I've started with an obtuse angle. Uh, so sine 135, that's going to be equal to sine of 180 minus 135, works out to 45. So sine 135 and sine 45 both have the same value. If I wrote their value out, it'd be 0 0.7071 is equal to 0 0.7071. So if you saw that in your calculator screen, you would know, um, is that an acute or is that an obtuse? Again, um, if you typed that value into your calculator, so let's say you put this value in, this is what would come out by default. The calculator will always spit the acute angle out. If that fits your triangle, great, but if you know that angle should be obtuse, then you simply make the adjustment and you move it to 135. That's the sort of thing we're going to look at in these future examples. Speaking of examples, here's our first one. Uh, excuse the hand-drawn triangle. It's a little bit easier to do in this program I'm using. I know it doesn't look perfect, but it gets the job done. So as I've talked about a lot of times, I like making my list. Now, the title of this lesson is sine law. So yes, we will use the sine law, but we want to maintain that ability to decide what, when to use cosine and when to use sine law. You can rely on knowing, oh, it's side, 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 that's cosine law, or you can use this little technique that I'm using here where you make your little list, you write things out. Again, remember, if this is A, that means this has to be side A. So this uh, ends up being 65. Um, angle B, I know, is 23 degrees. Opposite of it would be there. That's 40. That means the C. Um, I guess I don't know the C, and then angle C I don't know as well. So um, you can see I have um, my red theta at angle A, meaning I am looking for angle A. And now I can kind of look, to, step back and look at it. You see I have this row, which means I can use sine law. So I'll start doing that. So I want to use sine law in, with, that, with the A's and the B's. Um, you know from the acute triangle videos that I made that I kind of have a shortcut for this. So I will go, I'm going to start off with whatever I need to know. I put that top left in my ratio or my proportion, I'm sorry, um, sine B. It's not better math or anything. It's just a bit of a shortcut. Um, I don't have to do my full cross multiplication. Uh, so I'll get working here. So sine A, I don't know. Um, little a or side A ends up being 65. Sine B is going to be now sine 23 over little b, which is 40. And then with my shortcut, I only have to do the one part of my cross multiplication. So that's sine a equals 65 times sine 23. I see I have a scribble on the page, but we're just going to kind of power through that. That's 40. Uh, and then I don't want sine a, I want angle a. So it's going to be angle a is equal to inverse sine of all of this. And then I'd like to carry all this along. And I only do one calculation at the end. So some people I know will turn sine 23 into a decimal as soon as they can, not me. That's messy in my head. Sine 23 is really nice to write down. Or some people might figure out what 65 times sine 23 divided by 40 is and then get the decimal version of that and then end up putting that in here. But again, just wait. Write the whole thing out. 
it's just cleaner to do so and then plus you're not rounding until the very end and that's where you want to round. So once I plug those values in, I end up getting 39.4 degrees. All right, so that is an acute angle. Let's take a minute. Does 39.4 degrees fit this picture here? Now I know my picture isn't to scale, but that angle is clearly not acute. How do I know? Well, I'm gonna bring another color in here. Acute is less than 90. Obtuse is more than 90. So over here, that would be acute. If the angle was like that, then 39.4 would work. But we're on this side of things. So that's gonna be obtuse. So it's clearly more than 90 degrees, this angle. So it's not gonna be 39 degrees. It's gonna be that, uh, well, I'll have to use my supplementary relationship. So angle A is gonna be 180 degrees minus 39.4. And then that works out to 140.6 degrees. So the calculator can't tell you that. The calculator is going to spit out an acute angle each time. And then you have to determine, does that fit the triangle that I've been presented with? So right now, you're going to always have a triangle. They're going to, like, you'll be presented with a drawn triangle. The angles are never that close that you'll be, oh, is that acute? Is that obtuse? It'll be like this. This one is clearly obtuse or it's going to be clearly acute. All right, so that is how we use this sine-ratio uh, sine, sine relationship. Uh, let's do another example. All right, so this is a continuation of the previous example. It's the same triangle. You can see I've got 140.6 in angle A, and that's what we discovered before. Now I have side C highlighted, so that's what I'm going to use. So you can see here, without using that little list method, I have my angle side pair right there. Or I have an angle side pair right here. So which one should you use? Well, I would use my given information, meaning I'm going to use the, uh, the B's, not the A's, because what if I got A wrong, right? If I got A wrong, then now I'm going to get this next part wrong. So I always kind of try to use the given information. I try not to use my answers, but there's nothing wrong with using your answers. I'm just telling you in case you got part A wrong, then now you'll get part B wrong if you use that answer again. If you use the given information, you have a, a fresh chance of getting B correct. So we know to use sine law. Um, this little list method, like I said before, you don't have to use it. We know we're using sine law. But another benefit of it, and the reason I like doing it, is that it also just helps organize your answers. So I'm still gonna do it, because now my triangle looks kind of messy anyway. Um, I have 140.6 in angle A. I know angle B is 23 degrees. Side A ends up being 65. Side B ends up being 40. And you can see I have two full rows, so I can definitely use sine law. But I'm wondering about side C. So to use to if I'm if I'm going to find side C, that means I need to find angle C as well. So there's going to be two parts to this. Uh, this solution. First of all, I'm going to look for sine C. All right, to find sine C, well, the easiest thing to do, use that triangle knowledge that you guys gained in, I think it was our first chapter we did together, that three angles add to 180 in a triangle. So angle C is going to be equal to 180 minus the two angles I know. So minus 140.6 minus 23 that equals 16.4 degrees. Again, I'm not a robot. I don't have this. I didn't do that in my head really quickly. I wrote these numbers out before just to kind of speed ourselves up. So I know that's 16.4. And then um, when I'm now when I'm working with this, I'm going to use this row for sure because that contains the C. I need to use that. And then again, I can use A or B. Um, my practice, and I think a good practice for everybody, use the givens rather than your answers. So I'm going to use the B's, not the A's, because I want to avoid the 140.6 in case it's wrong. It won't be wrong. We got it right. But just in general, that's a smart thing to do. So let's do the second part. Uh, we are now looking for side C. So I'm going to, the thing I want, I put top left. So I'm writing this out. 
angle C, I don't know, or sorry, side C, I don't know, so I leave that. Uh, now it's going to be sine 16.4 degrees, so I can put my degrees sign. Uh, little b is 40, that is side b, over sine 23 degrees. And now you can do the full cross multiplication or you can do my little shortcut if you're putting the thing you need in the top left. Again, an aside, why my shortcut works is that usually you cross multiply, but then you're going to have to end up dividing that by sine 23, so you're going to move it right back to where it was. So really just don't move it. So I'm taking advantage of a pattern there. Um, I know a pattern, taking advantage of it. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. So let's write out what I have now. I have C equals 40 times sine 16.4 divided by sine 23. When you're looking for the sides, it's a little bit quicker question. I don't do the inverse or anything like that. I end up getting 28.9. Now, we just did a sine law question with an obtuse triangle in which we didn't have to make any adjustments. The adjustments only come up when you're finding an angle and uh, using the sine law and you know it's not fitting. So like when I go back to here, 16.4, if I go to my angle or my triangle, 16.4 is acute. That is definitely acute. So I know it's right. If that looked like it was an obtuse angle, then I might have to make an adjustment. Let's do one more example. Again, I'm going to start my list. I like it to make that decision, sine or cosine law. I like it to organize my answers. It's just a good habit to get into. So that angle A is 28. Angle C is 22. You can see I have a lot of information in this question. Side A uh, is 6. Side B ends up being 8.2. And I also know side C, which is four. So actually I could use sine law or cosine law in this question, but I'm gonna use sine law in this one. Um, and I gave you lots of information because sometimes you do, you have more than just three. We're used to only having three pieces of information and then you know, I just use everything. In this one, I have more than enough. So I'm gonna use some of it, but not all of it. And that's kind of a skill too, just to know that, hey, I don't need to use it all. So I'm gonna look for angle B. That's why I have my red theta sign there. Um, and you have a couple different ways you want it, th that we could do it. Um, it doesn't really matter. I When I did my work, for some reason, I chose this one. And then, of course, I have to choose the B. So I use the C's and B's. It doesn't. It really doesn't matter, though. So well, I started using red. I might as well stick with red. So sine B over 8.2 equals sine 22 over 4. Okay, I'll do my cross multiplication. I'm going to do my shortcut though, because I put the thing I needed in the top left. So I put it here. If you put the thing you need in the top left, you can use this shortcut. Equals 8.2 times sine 22 divided by 4. Now I don't want sine B, I want angle B. So angle B equals n sine negative 1. 8.2 times sine 22. Again, I don't calculate these numbers till the very end. Two reasons. Number one, I don't want to estimate. You're going to have a long run on answer. So, and then we're going to have to round it. I don't want to round anything until the very end. The second thing, it's just neat to, or like neat as in tidy, to write numbers in this form anyway. So why change it? Okay, so then now it's calculator time. Again, this stuff can sometimes be confusing when you're entering into your calculator, so make sure you talk to a teacher to make sure you know how you're, uh, that you're doing it correctly. Um, when I do this calculation, I end up getting 50 degrees. All right, so now it's sine law. I've always got to double check my answer. When I'm looking for an angle, I've got to double check my answer. If I'm looking for a side, I have no worries. So if you're looking for a side, it does not matter if it's a cute triangle or an obtuse angle or an obtuse triangle. If you're looking for an angle, then it matters. All right. So does that angle look, does angle B look like it is acute or obtuse? Remember, I can put my little 90 degree angle right here. So this is 90 degrees. It is more than 90 degrees, meaning that this thing has to be obtuse. So what I can do and what I often do is I could call that my first angle. So angle B subscript one. And this could be my second one, which is going to be my 180 minus the 50, so 130. So the answer in this case is actually 130, it's not 50.
Before I close, I just want to really stress when you're looking for a side length, it doesn't matter. There's no adjustments to what we're doing. The acute triangle um, techniques work uh, the same as the obtuse triangle techniques. It's when you're looking for an angle. That's when you have to see, do I have to make an adjustment? All right. I hope that made sense to everybody. Have a great night. Hi again, everybody. I know I signed off once, but then I decided I should write up that uh, the things I was saying. So here it is. Uh, in summary, when you're looking for side lengths using the sign law, there's no change in technique from the acute triangle. So there's no worry. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, but when you're looking for an angle, you have to watch for that angle adjustment. So my example is uh, you might solve and have an angle of 40 degrees, but then you realize, no, that's wrong. It should be obtuse. So I have to choose 140 degrees. All right. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Now have a good night.